Hello friends. So today we are going to take up some of the very important questions and queries that every candidate who goes through this FRCS preparation has at one point in their preparation, this kind of questions. And I've been getting questions in the email, in the WhatsApp. And so I thought that the best person to answer this is somebody who is actually working in the UK system and somebody who has gone through this uh, exam staying working at UK and uh, today we have the opportunity to have with us Dr. Firoz and he's currently working at uh, the Basildon Hospital in UK and uh, he has passed his FRCS Serology, the international exam in January this year. So it's a great privilege for us to have you here and share your experience Dr. Firoz. Thank you so much for taking out time and uh, we are waiting to hear from you your experience and your FRCS journey. Uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me for this uh, for this discussion which can benefit other people and really this is my uh, desire yeah. and intention that uh, we just want to get other people also in this journey and definitely this uh, exam uh, which is a uh, doable and this is not a kind of exam especially international one which is very tough exam no uh, but there are some tricks and tips which I just want to share with you. Yeah, we uh, are waiting our... to hear from you. We are waiting to hear from you the mm. tips and tricks. Before that, share your FRCS journey. Like, when did you uh, decide to appear for it? And uh, what was your, just a brief about your journey of FRCS. Let mm -hmm. us hear from this. So, well, I started when I was working in uh, Saudi Arabia. And um, I was already planning to go US. I passed my US USMLA all steps. So meanwhile, I had time to just appear for these exams to get a degree and just, just you know, to, in, to improve my credentials. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any problem with written. I, I have not failed many little, I, I have not failed since maybe more than 30 years. I never failed any written. However, I appeared multiple written exams, including the USMLA and FRCS first step. But I have a trouble uh, passing this uh, viva. I don't know why, but it happens due to stress, due to you know face to face encounter. But and I failed some attempts and very very near. Uh, I mean some eight marks, six marks, but I keep uh, appearing for these exams and every failure was giving me age to pass this exam. Exactly. exactly. I can say wow. every, my, my, my failures, uh, my success failures was hidden. Failures. Learning experience. Well, every Absolutely. failure is a learning experience. So one should not, even uh, those who are not able to get it on, a number of attempts doesn't matter. I think for this exam, at least, it doesn't matter how many attempts you have given. Even we were talking to Dr. Adalizim last day. He was only saying one thing. Just learn from your mistakes and keep learning. Uh, if every failure is going to teach you something new. Well, I have a kind of personality. I understand every person is different and they have a different approach, but certain things will affect everybody. Well, I, I have a kind of personality, you know, if I fail, I get crazy about it. I know now I want to pass it. <laughs> so yeah. Obviously, I try to get what mistakes I have done. Definitely. So that helps. And uh, But it's a doable exam. Uh, let me compare to be, I have appeared in both international and UK one also. Okay. And I would like to share a very good news with everybody. And uh, now UK and international FRC, urology FRCS is equal. Yeah. Only urology. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, in the sense of quality of exam? No, not in terms. I'm saying the, the eligibility for further, you know, yeah, eligibility, if right. anybody want to pursue in Caesar program. Previously, it was Caesar. Now they have changed since uh, last year, November. It is now. We will come to that. We, would, we definitely want to hear from that. Once somebody has passed the international FRCS, the one question that we frequently get asked, like how to become a consultant in UK? What is the path? Somebody who is working in Saudi, somebody who is working in uh, in any country other than UK, he has passed the international FRCS. Now, how to become a consultant there? How many years does it take? And what was actually the Caesar and what are the changes has happened? So this is a question yeah. that very frequently get asked and words from you is definitely going to help people. Yeah, yeah, yes. I will be very clear because I have gone through that's called SSG guidelines, okay. uh, specialty specific guidelines guide its guidance and uh, well if you anybody is passing international frcs 
if he has good experience, he has done his uh, urology degree outside UK. If you know the stuff, he's eligible for the, you know, locum consultantship. Okay. But for that, he can get the locum consultant in UK. Uh, if he has good experience, uh, he know. Uh, yeah, so one question, one question, one question here, sorry for interruption. Somebody has passed his residency or training, completed his training in any other country other than UK, and he wants to apply for a local consultant. How many years of experience after training, completion of training, does somebody require before becoming a local consultant? Is there a specific duration of training that they look for? Some experience? No, no, no. Oh. No, no, no. If he has done four years uh, residency and some more than two years experience okay. in urology okay. and he shows his competency, he can work as a locum consultant, not a substantial post. Okay. For substantial post, now only urology international is eligible to apply for that. Maybe he, it will take one and a half hour to complete his portfolio. There are certain procedures in the which is called index procedures uh, he needs sign offs by his lead clinical lead or other consultant at least three consultants should sign off this okay. procedure that's a process that will take one or two years okay. to complete and he will be uh, registered with gmc uh, in the specialist okay. register okay. and okay. then he's he is eligible for the uh, post is it, as is it substantial consultant a, sorry uh, is it necessary that uh, one has to go through the local consultant post to become a consultant? No, 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 no. One can that's do it? Okay. It's yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's that's not necessary. Okay. So, mm. uh, this very important, uh, what we understood is the CESAR program. So, what was the CESAR program and how, how has it changed now? Yeah, well, I have gone through the SS, SSG guidelines. Previously, it was called the Caesar program. Now it's called portfolio program. But okay. because that was not my interest to go to Caesar, and I don't know that previously, but I have a new, you know, SSG guide, uh, guidance. Okay. And I heard and from the people that there was a lot of procedures you have to prove your uh, competency equal to JU, UK training like a cct training like that there should be some comp comparison but now it's not like that now it's a certain procedures and certain cases you have to you know make the case big discussions that sign offs it's much easier than oh. caesar previous okay so the process what was previously was much uh, lengthier now the process yeah. is pretty much uh, it has become a shorter path to a consultant rather than uh, a Caesar program, which was a longer duration. Not Great. only in terms of time, in okay. terms of requirements for the the program. In Caesar program, there were a lot of courses you have to do, a lot of things to have to show the equivalence like yeah, in UK okay. training. And But now it's it's not like this. Portfolio, you can build this portfolio. It's easier than, okay. than Caesar. Okay. Very important statement. I think uh, this confusion is always there for international candidates, especially who has written the MRCS and the FRCS. They have just appeared for the FRCS because they want to settle in the UK and get a job of a consultant. But they have always a doubt how many years is it going to take. So approximately we can conclude that if they have a two years experience in their country, I think it's going to take two more years in the UK, two to three years to become a consultant. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the most important point is that most important thing is department should be supportive. If anybody having intention like this to go through, they should, during interview, you should tell the interviewer that I am planning to go through this portfolio program. Would you support me? If they say they will support me because support is very necessary. Okay. The consultant on leads should sign off. Right. Without their sign offs, he cannot do anything. So yeah. that's very important. Does the FRCS makes it uh, easier because uh, uh, is it mandatory for a consultant in UK to have an FRCS or somebody no, can no. become a consultant without an FRCS as well? No, no. See, there, as I said, there are two types of consultants. Yeah. Substantial post means if which I am pursuing. Okay. I can complete this portfolio, then I will register with GMC. Okay. Then I will get substantial post. I can work in private. I okay. will get a permanent job. I have much more privilege. Right. In locum, locum consultant, that means, well, you cannot work in private. You have a limited resources, limited okay. working environment. There are certain limitations. 
Yes, yes, yes. And so there are a lot of doubts which have been cleared, I think. Uh, very important words, Dr. Uh, Dr. Feroz. But uh, one very uh, important question that we are asked is, we have been talking <laughs> we have been talking for the last five minutes about what if we pass the exam, but how to pass this exam. So yes. there are a lot of questions like, so first of all, we want to discuss on why the pass rates are so low. So I, I want to share with you, this is a really a matter of concern that the pass rate Hope you can see this. This is what I got the FRCS pass rates for the international candidates. And if you look at for the last 10 years, the pass rates is always less than 50%. And if you look at the last four years, the pass rate has gone down to at a point to 10%. So we can see in 2021, only out of 106 candidates, only 11 candidates passed. So this was the situation away years back. Even in the last year, even this March, the international pass rate was less than 30%. So this is a really matter of concern and we should compare it with the pass rates for the UK candidates. You always see that the pass rate is very good. The pass rates for the UK candidates are always more than 50%. Somebody who has gone through the UK training program, the pass rates is always 60, 70, and it's never less than 50, usually not less than 50%. So their pass rates are much higher. So it's a matter of concern for the international candidates and how can they do something to improve these pass rates. Uh, since you have gone through this international exam as well and UK exam as well, you are going to the best person to guide us through this. And the candidate yeah. would like to hear from you what is happening, why the pass rates are low and what can we do to improve it? Well, uh, uh, my input in this situation is that in UK exam, the failure rate of international candidates is very high. But in international exam, I think that should be that pass rate should be high. But I can tell you in our group, last time, maybe I should mention you were with us. Yeah, yeah. And only yeah. one candidate failed. Yeah, so the what I've seen, uh, this was mainly for the section one, what I'm showing data for the section one. For section two, the pass rates are also uh, less in the international candidates, but what strangely happened the last year in the January, the pass rate rose to 70%, which was never there for the last 10 years. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, let, let me. Searches and, uh, but we should assume that the international candidates still, what the data says, what the statistics say, have a lower pass rates, whether they appear in the international uh, UK or whether they appear in the international centers. The, the, there is some problem with the uh, questions which are asked and probably the resources that we are studying in the international as an international candidates, maybe the resources are different. That is why there are some difference in the approach to this exam. I think whenever somebody has to approach a exam, uh, we have to adapt to that medical system. For example, in the UK, we have to start thinking about the NICE guidelines, which we are probably not reading most of the times. And uh, this is more based on the EAU guidelines, in my perception. So we would like to hear from you also. Why do you think this could be a difference in the pass percentage and what can be done to bridge this gap? Uh, well, I will give just a, a comparative idea about these <laughs> exams and uh, and tell what is happening, which, I, which is in my mind. Sure, sure. I think the international one is still, because we passed, we know it, it's much more subject basis. I mean, if you have good grip on the topic and you present it systematically, Right. you will pass right right but in uk one it's not only knowledge and they are not that much interested in knowledge about okay. you know about subject they just bring you something very unusual things which i've been never asked in international one like i can say this time in uk one which i could not pass i was expected that in UK International One, I have just a CT scan with Stegard and Stone in infarction and stone uh, station I'm talking about. But <laughs> in UK One, they gave me IVP okay. and, and patient with cerebral palsy. Okay. He forces Steg, uh, Stegard and Stone right side, significant post wide in a this up mess they are giving and we have to they are checking going directly towards the higher order thinking right what right. possibilities right. are there there could be this patient would be have the issue of recurrent infections stones 
and this will be now how this patient will have the problem with avoiding symptoms avoiding we have to make patient patient may need uh, self intermittent catheterization long term antibiotic everything in one case so they are much more checking your higher order thinking right. and there your patient should be well good knowledge on the topic and also you should think out of box right right and we will definitely lack the inherent techniques like uh, these uh, UK residents do have. They have developed those techniques right. during the long experience. During, I mean, five, six yeah, years yeah. of residency. Right, so right. they have inbuilt that technique and their voice, their attitude, their English is very good, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And they right. can the talk. The communication. Yeah. I think the most they, important in the Viva exam is the communication. And they have been growing in an environment where every alternate person is giving this exam. And therefore, the guidance, the training, and the whole thing is very, the environment is based on that. So that's exactly. why I think they know the exam. They, they know the exam. We don't know the exam. exam. They have grown up in that <laughs> that, exam. That's a problem. So, so I think it's, it's, it's a passing UK exam for international candidates would be a little bit tougher, different. but it's doable once you understand it's doable. Yeah, so but uh, but international one international one is much more straighter, and last time the question has been asked subject wise. If you are good knowledge, you will easily pass that. Yeah. So one important point: we should have a complete idea of the subject. So Absolutely. the problem is somebody who is doing a subspecialty. For example, a senior urologist is probably practicing either oncology or he's either doing a endo urology. So more senior the urologist is more difficult it is for them to go back to the whole subject and get an idea of somebody with something that he's not practicing. So that is what I understood is one should spend more time and try to cover all the aspects of the subject and just not what is the current trend is somebody is practicing an endourology and he's doing just that only for years and he's not having any idea of pediatrics and he's probably not dealing with emergency. So it becomes difficult for them to read the books and understand that they, they will be asked about the, uh, the approach in the Viva. So it becomes difficult. So you should spend more time, especially, and uh, cover those topics which you are not practicing. <laughs> now, beyond that, I can say, see, yeah. I've been asked in technology. I have very good you know, control on technology, but I've been asked how you will set up the Eurodynamics machines yeah. and every channel which i have done near of 15 years back since then i have never seen <laughs> he was i forget everything i mean i don't know i know certain things which is written in books yeah, which like, i know i have gone through the donati notes and i know those tips exactly, exactly. and beyond that boom <laughs> something Nothing. that you're not so, able to practice and you have been asked yeah. it, then it becomes difficult <laughs> For example, they're not practicing female urology, but they're asking on questions on questions on female urology. It becomes very difficult. Yeah, I mean, this UK one, you should know your tips, tricks, how to do it, and yeah. at least how to present. You can play with them a little bit if you are very, if you are aware about the things. And I think in every topic, if it's better to get one study, then I've been not asking too yeah. much studies, to yeah, be very yeah. frank. If you don't know, if you have zero studies, no worries. Guidelines, not 100% necessary, but you yeah. should think out of box. You should go that book is not enough that donate to any book. I can say whether Campbell, uh, you can read. But those things, they, they are checking your higher order things, how you are thinking, how you are approaching. Yeah. And those things are very important and so what, and, and they, what they, there is there is inherent bias against international candidates because we are not trained like here exactly. trainees exactly. and we and can we can true. present we can present differently and they will not give us marks however right. if we are even right because they are habitual to see that they are candidates and they are you know that's inherent bias in them exactly. it's not the deliberation it's just you know they are Going it's account UK system for them to adopt this uh, international system for them, <laughs> so that's why this discrimination happens by itself. But they are lenient, I think. For the they don't mark you based on the communication and uh, based on the accent and all. Especially if they are taking the international exams, do they? No, yeah, you know, international. I'm saying uh, I'm feeling very comfortable with that. They don't consider these things. Yeah, yeah. But in in UK one, they, they consider these things, and they yeah. are checking your approach, how you are thinking, thinking process. Um, you you have to convince them. 
But in international one, if you know subject, you can talk about subject. That's it. And they will pass you if you know all the tips and tricks of okay. subject. You are well prepared. You have good flow and they can don't ask make anything. big blunders. The basic thing is don't make big blunders. Just uh, talk about basics and take the examiner to the higher level of thinking, higher, higher discussion. So please tell us what about the resources? You said don't rely totally on Donati. Don't rely totally on the guidelines. Then how to prepare? What would you recommend? For uh, both for, let us first take, talk about section one, then section two. What is your advice? What should be the resources? But section one, I have passed long, long back. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. And uh, one good thing happened with me, my international FRCS part one has been accepted by UK one. This is something additional. I'm very, I think, privileged in, the, in these terms. Uh, okay. So, but I have passed a long, long, I, I worked a lot. I studied a lot because I was already in, in UK, US, uh, doing USMLE. I had a time in Saudi. So I have gone through many resources, uh, which I, I don't want to commit on that. I, this very long, long time back when, but part about part two, you can go through Donati. You can go to this urology master, the urology book. That's fine. But they need, you know, discuss with some good person yeah. who, who has a, a knowledge, yeah. uh, who has a experience and think out of box, like like a patient in cancer table, like in prostate cancer. They might not ask you a question about prostate cancer directly, right? right. Patient can present with spine mats and back pain and it will be the like an emergency case. Right. But with hyperkalemia, Due to obstruction, you know, blood outlet obstruction. The whole, the whole scenario as a whole. Yeah, yeah, and he patient will have a potassium six and six and six to seven, and you are going to treat the prostate cancer. Come yeah. on, <laughs> you know, you know. Obviously, they want to judge you. Check how you are. You are your brain working properly? You will deal with the emergencies first. Right. and life-threatening conditions and obviously you know this is a prostate cancer table they will take you there don't worry <laughs> obviously psa will be high age will be there so yeah. i mean if systematically you know your approach is very much very safe very important and uh, definitely you will pass think out of box all the time in every right. topic read it properly imbibe the topic very yeah. in um, and think yeah, think beyond that, this what right. can happen how how the present and you can if you are preparing helping people you can help them please you can definitely going to help them yeah i think the practical thinking just what you do in your practice try to think about that and try to apply that and definitely uh don't just think about the station that you're sitting in and you'll be asked on that only maybe one minute discussion can happen outside that station also so don't panic if suddenly somebody is asking on emergency in your oncology. Very important discussion. Very important point that you brought about. Now, one thing is a uh, candidate who is going for the VIVA exam. Which stations are very uh, particularly notorious for, uh, like, there are 16 stations altogether. Total eight tables. Okay. So, which station do you personally feel that this is the most difficult and the pass rates for them is usually the examiners are very strict on those uh, particular stations. I think uh, pediatric is always a, a top job because if they go to typical things, you know, even just there's nowhere written how to exam and descend testicles. You have a, you, you, you are aware about the techniques, but you don't perform it properly because you never perform. And they are so specific about that. And a lot of things they can, they can ask you beyond. The, you know, this is something that I've heard from other people also. Pediatrics and so, also emergency, I think. Uh, these are something that we are very particular and you, they don't accept the blunders or even mistakes. They expect you to know everything. We're in the emergency. One should not forget the basic resuscitation before going for the definite management and all every point in emergency is also very skeptically looked at. The examiners are going to judge you on everything that you utter, I think. So emergency Absolutely. is what I feel is important. Absolutely. But still emergencies, you, you know the stuff. You know the stuff. Most of people know the stuff. And one more is, I think in my experience, confusing that's female urology. I mean, functional urology. Believe me, you can't understand that what they want from you. Most of the time it's happening. Right, because the, they will give you an MRI sometimes. And sometimes they talk about bladder diary and everything you have to... I think one should note down the points and whatever the examiner information is being provided, just note down the points and try to come to a basic diagnosis, whether it is... Uh, you have to reach to the aerodynamics. 
that functional station should reach to, to a urodynamic and you should know what are the investigations you need before a urodynamic and you have them or not. If you have them, then the next thing is you are going to ask for urodynamic and the examiner is going to provide you that. And sometimes the quality of urodynamics is very difficult to, to understand what they are actually uh, providing and what they actually want to hear from you. But it's okay, stay confident and stick to the basic uh, good practices in urodynamics and utter those things only. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's fine. That's safe. <laughs> That's safe. <laughs> Go safely. So uh, what about the technology? What would you advise? Because there are a lot of things which can be asked in technology and uh, the resources uh, are very limited for technology. We don't have much resources to read. Do we need to read the transplant also? Do we need to read, where do we read from dialysis or uh, this uh, whole thing? So how to prepare the technology station? I think uh, Donati book is enough. And if uh, you need some more insight about certain things like PET scans, MRIs, you can read it through it, Google it. And there's a lot of stuff. Now, nowadays, you don't need to book to read. You have a lot of stuff there. And just imbibe that information, especially technical point of view, technological point of view. And uh, I, mean, I mean, that's enough just to go through ev everything. But, you know, like the scenario which was in my exam in UK one, which I don't know, I, I think whether that, that will be an international one or not. But here in UK that, uh, you know, Eurodynamics is a, one of the component of in index procedures. So that's why they ask these things also. Great, great. So uh, one thing regarding the uh, section two, group preparation is mandatory. I think it's required. Every sh everybody should have a at least a study partner, which we already discussed. So what do you think should be the uh, group preparation strategy being? What I feel is uh, you should always make a group with someone who has registered for the exam. <laughs> they should be the first prerequisite. Don't study with someone. You, if you have registered and somebody else is your partner who has not yet registered, don't study with that person. <laughs> study with, if you are appearing on the same exam, both of you are going to equally contribute. Otherwise, it's not possible. <laughs> what is your opinion? What should uh, be the group? How big should be the group? And... Uh, how should how frequently should we discuss? I I can do it's about this exam is a clashy to having a group and practice. Well, you if you practice wrongly for hundred years, you will never pass this exam. <laughs> right. <laughs> and okay. You are everybody actually. Oh, let's uh, practice practice, which is usually conventional here. They are also recommending, but that, this is not true. This is not right way. You should rightly practice with the right person. Right. If, you have a group, that's fine, but have a guidance from some expert person right. who can guide you. And that is very important. And then stick with that practice yeah. and just evolve timely. If you start three months before, that's a good time and evolve, change the strategy. I think some there should be some person who can guide you. That's a better approach. Yeah, I think the best thing is if you're making a group, request someone who has passed the exam. Absolutely. Who is going to be supervising you? Otherwise, the discussion is not going to be that effective. Nobody is going to correct you. All of you might think this is the right answer and this is the right answer. This is the right way to say this in the exam. But it, I think it's very difficult to judge among yourself. It's always better to have someone who is your senior and who is there who has gone through this road previously. I can say two blinds can't find the way. We should have at least with one eye person. <laughs> right, right. You need someone at least who has gone through that, whether he has passed or not, but he has appeared for this exam before. It's not for the recalls. You don't need the recalls. I think recalls are not important for this exam. What you need is the basic strategy. You should know what the examiners uh, look like, what face they make when you uh, say this thing. You should know this much only. And the behavior of the examiner, when they, when you tell something and how they react, all these things are important. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. Somebody and who has gone through this can guide you. Yeah, well, I want to mention very important things here. See, it's that day, exam day. Obviously, apart from what we have discussed, that's important. But the exam day, you should sleep well. Right, very important. You should have you structure in your mind. Okay, I'm going to present like this, any table. And you should think out of box. They, there can be some scenarios which is beyond your knowledge or beyond uh, your uh, practice. Yeah, yeah. So the remote uh, memory, I think it works only when you have slept, slept well. Yeah. Because certain things which you will be talking based on remote memory, hmm. which you have studied a long while back and you're going to yeah. record that only if you have good sleep. Yeah. And every word with what you are uttering in those 10 minutes, blame me, don't underestimate. Whatever you utter, that 
not have a value of I can hundred dollars. I can say right. everything has value. Do talk anything which is not relevant, which is nonsense. Believe me, any point because they don't go uh, dig inside you, inside your mind. They see what you are saying. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. And don't underestimate. So whatever you are saying, keep it very specific and speak only right things. Right, right, right. Because it's a very expensive exam. What absolutely. I it's not Absolutely. only hundred dollars; it's three thousand dollars. So every word that you utter is going to make you a, either a loss of three thousand dollars because that is what is going to be uh, really matter because the exam appears. Money. There, but this uh, money is very huge, and yeah, uh, under stress that uh, such a, a huge investment is there for this section one, mm -hmm. section two traveling. So all this is a huge investment, but we, that should not demotivate us. We should we should keep working for this. We should know the strategy. And uh, then we are going to definitely pass. Every everybody ultimately makes it through this exam. Somebody who has yeah. committed to this exam has will will go through it successfully. This Absolutely. is not an impossible way. This is very possible. Yes, please, please. Sir. Yeah, every every you know station is different. Yeah. So you should have a strategy for every table differently. Okay. Don't mix. Don't make it the whole day like it is. Low compartmentalize every station. This strategy for stones, infection, this strategy for technology. So that will work. And a person should not just make a strategy, then uh, it right. will change. There right. should be how how craftily you can change your strategy according to scenario, according to question. Right. And you don't have to show their knowledge. You right. have to answer their question, right. not your knowledge. Knowledge right. is there, relevant to their question. Yeah. relevant to the scenario that's it yeah, otherwise you can keep talking 10 minutes on one question Useless. <laughs> it will not give you anything no. it will not no you. nothing nothing <laughs> it's right. not only talk people say talk talk no, no it is true. relevant talk yeah it's relevant talk and give the examiner time to talk and there should be a communication between the two consultants and should feel and like i think consultant. for me it's very hard part <laughs> very hard part and i think i should i am still appearing for uk when people say why you don't need this is just crazy. Really this I'm just. Do we really need, uh, Doctor Firoz? Do we really? No, 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 no. No, I don't need it. But uh, I've uh, already done it. It's my craziness. So how can I fail? I have to pass it. But let's see. I mean, commitment. Yeah, that's it's commitment. I, I just. It will definitely. It will show in my CV, and it will. It's a credential, and it's good to have multiple uh, double FRCS. You know, I, I have good. friends. I have friends who have done the double FRCS, but. They have done in the past because that time uh, it was not recognized as equal to UK one. But now they would have be very lenient. But I am a little bit commit committed to this. That's fine. I'm here. I will do. I love studying. So that's a motivation. I, many of the candidates will be motivated by hearing your commitment. So <laughs> it's a great thing that you're sharing all this. I think not many people we can reach who have gone through this, and it's very difficult to reach people because we really need to talk to them. Somebody who has gone through this road of FRCS journey, we need to talk to them. And everybody, every candidate are looking for someone who has gone through this road. It's not because we want to hear from them the recalls. We just want to know how does it feel, how the journey can be made easier, and how should we prepare, and what should be the basic strategy on the day of exam. This much of things we should uh, know from the candidates who have gone through this exam. Whether successful or not, we should talk to them, we should learn from them. That is the whole purpose of these meetings. Absolutely. I appreciate your this uh, journey and you have started to help people. I think uh, we are there to support you and keep it up, keep it going on. Okay, so and much. we should, this is, we are like FRC's family. We have to bring other people who yeah, are struggling to help yeah. them, to Definitely. come, to bring them out of this these failures. Right. And this is doable exam. Every, every person has a different journey. Okay. Absolutely. And I think... Uh, if we can reach to most of the people who have gone through this exam, I think if we can help a lot of candidates by just talking to them for half an hour. It's going to give a lot of, a lot of important inputs, which uh, is going to benefit, uh, benefit everyone, everyone who is just thinking of uh, appearing, but there are a lot of questions in their mind. What next? How to go about it? Because there is no proper guidance available and there should be no guidance. Like it's not possible to guide a consultant. You're already a consultant. Nobody can guide a consultant. It becomes very difficult to accept new things and study for an exam once you're a consultant. But you have to. You have to go through this journey and you hear from people who have gone through it. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you. So one message from you. There is going to be a November exam and a January exam, both for section two. And the next month, just a few days later uh, after this, uh, in, on 3rd of July, we are in the section one. What is your opinion? What is your suggestions for those, for them? Very important. Everything but I can't, I, I, I can't suggest on section one because my bleak memories okay. now, uh, okay. that those okay. has gone. Okay. But obviously, I, I wish them all the best and they should prepare. It's, it's a, they have to study and study for part one. There's nothing a technical point of view I'm asking, but they have that that's it. But part two, definitely they should focus on the subject. How much time should they spend? Have a, huh? How much time should they spend? How much I time? think I think three months, six months. Three months, three months, three months is minimum minimum time to yeah. you know practice this exam. Three months is minimum, three months of dedicated preparation. If you are working Absolutely. a lot. If you're in a very hectic schedule, I think six months you should start. Yeah. If they have a guidance uh, like you, like you are guiding the people, I mean, that will be additional point for them and uh, that will lead them towards the success. Believe me, Thanks. very, very vital for their success. And uh, they should know the subject plus out of box thinking, higher order thinking, and that day focus on the exam day and have well planned what they have to answer how they have to answer and they should keep calm on the exam day and focus on those scenarios and questioning and try technique that's very important so uh there have been uh questions like is there a need for appearing for any mock exams i think last yeah, you, well, year, well definitely most of the candidates can't uh, appear for them because they are very expensive and it's a one day exam, one day mock exam, and uh, you will be asked on one scenario and you might not, you might end up losing confidence. So there are mixed feedbacks from these candidates. What is your opinion? Did you give any mock exam or do you feel it is necessary? I have given many mock exams, <laughs> many and many. Uh, but I don't think, uh, I mean, if it is one month before or some two, three weeks before, even one week before, it's okay. If he is well prepared, definitely he will not fail mock exam. Mock exam is always doable and usually people pass, but it's actual exam, which is important. For that, they need some kind of practice, mock exams and some guidance. Right. That will be, that will effect on end result. Right. I think uh, every day you are practicing with your colleague, you should think that it's a mock exam. Yeah, that, that. every session of practice should be like a mock exam set a timer and uh, you should give questions to your colleagues and your colleagues will be asking to you and uh, it should be like a real exam scenario you should spend 20 minutes each and uh, keep it like that design the group discussion that way but always keep a senior in your group otherwise there is no point in discussing because uh, both of you will ultimately end up uh, losing interest because there will be no one to correct you and, uh, one more additional difficult. point. Yeah, yeah, please. If they can uh, discuss the subject, that topic together, discuss it properly, its pros and cons from initial diagnostic to till the management. It's better to have that. But down the line, they have to make a 10 man discussion. You're right, right. So the, that's very important. The one who's playing the role of examiner has to be very. Uh, very much prepared as an examiner also. He should yeah. not uh, just spend 10 minutes asking random questions and uh, should, because that it should be like, you should uh, be equally contributing in the group. Otherwise there is uh, no point. Uh, the other candidate is not going to benefit. And suddenly he will stop sharing his piece of information and there is a lot of uh, problems. So keep a small group and uh, interested people with one senior to guide you. Yeah, absolutely. And every talk is should be very specific. Every word should be specific right. for the scenarios. It should not be here and there. Right. So, so what I used to do during my group preparation time is to uh, write down the... So if I'm becoming the examiner, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to taking 10 minutes why was, uh, for some candidate. I used to write down the feedbacks immediately well when i'm asking for every question i would have a feedback so that at the end of 10 minutes or 20 minutes i know what to correct him so that way uh, if you are doing a group preparation that will help you should have a feedback ready when you are completing the 20 minutes for the candidate and they should and they should also record that that yeah. scenario that 10 minutes, 10 minutes and then re listen that 
and check it's him very but he will be the when best judge you know, <laughs> huh? say something it sounds very good but when you listen the recording the recordings are absolutely different you under you start thinking what did what were i saying for that 10 minutes <laughs> to go back absolutely absolutely but it. still you can you can uh, uh, candidate can change and he can listen his mistakes and then he can take cognizance of those mistakes and he will be better person to improve that so thank you thank you so much everything that you shared starting from the road to uk because international candidate should know how can they reach uk so everybody knows about the gmc registration but how to get to the specialist registration registration the previous csr ut and the portfolio that you are talking about so every candidate want to know about it so we have a clarity on that now and what resources most of it are the same the resources are the same the only thing is your strategy of preparation and Absolutely. we are concerned about the pass rates but that should not demotivate us the pass rates are definitely low in the international exam but we can do it it's still doable and people are cracking it if they have a strong commitment for this exam all you need is a commitment and your hard work which you are definitely going to have when you have registered for this exam you have committed for this exam for the next one year at least and uh, everybody can do it don't look at the past rate it's just a matter of discussion you should not demotivate you keep yourself motivated and committed if you want to come out with flying colors and uh, we will uh, soon meet you uh, again dr feroz for again maybe another meeting very soon and we will yeah, that's fine i'm open to help anybody i want everybody to pass this exam and uh, ankit your initiative is absolutely it's Thank a good so platform much. it's a great pleasure for us to have you uh, with us and i think everybody who is going to uh, listen to you and your words definitely they are going to get a lot of important information which was not ever discussed previously probably in an uh, open platform i think uh, it's very important that we, we should uh, gather the frcs candidates who have passed the exam or who have gone through this road and we should unite them to share their opinion on them on this exam it's very important so we have a lot of <laughs> queries solved but there will be definitely new questions coming up <laughs> at your pleasure <laughs> and we are going to meet again very soon and uh, thank you so much thank you so much i, I know you are very busy thank you so much for taking out time for us right okay bye 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 bye, -bye. bye, -bye.